What's up Packers fans, Mark Oldacres here back with another five prospects to know video and after all the pro days and now in the books, the combine long behind us, we have testing information on pretty much every player that's going to be available in the 2024 NFL draft. We are back and looking at prospects again with just a couple weeks now, just over until the NFL draft kicks off and today we're going to look at offensive linemen, obviously a key position for the Packers in this upcoming draft, they need to add some depth to the room uh, as it currently stands. And we're going to look at five players in particular today. And hopefully some ones that you don't know about that are kind of going to be maybe day two, later day two or into day three guys to watch out for as the Packers have liked to do some shopping there previously. Okay, so first of all, we're going to go through kind of the parameters for what the Packers are looking for from their offensive linemen. Um, and a couple notes here. The Packers don't draft guards. They don't do it. They don't draft guys who only play guard in college. They draft either college tackles or and kick them inside to guard or keep them at tackle if obviously they can survive out there. Or they take college centers and move them around maybe like a, an Elton Jenkins or just leave them there like a Josh Myers. So they don't draft guards. So there's not going to be any kind of just sole guards like even I think Zach Zinter who actually visited with the Packers. He's not going to be on this list. Um, elsewhere... They care about testing at this position, and 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 it's kind of a it's a really it's about as specific as the Packers get at any position because the offensive line for the Packers not only can you kind of be too small or too light, you can actually be too tall or too heavy as well. They, they have a really kind of specific range that they like to draft offensive linemen in. Um, that range, at least under Gudekunst, has been taller than a uh, tackle at least uh, taller than six foot four uh, and two tenths. Uh, and no, no taller than six six and four tenths, and heavier than three hundred and four pounds, or at least three hundred and four pounds, and no heavier than three hundred and twenty one pounds. Um, in terms of the actual athletic testing, the highest kind of percentiles that they've looked for, uh, the explosive scores have actually been pretty high on there. So the the lowest um, percentile that they've drafted um, on the offensive line under Gudekunst, uh, again at least a, a offensive tackle guys that played there in college. Um, 58th percentile for the vert and 70th percentile for the broad. So those are pretty high numbers that you have to hit. Um, also the 10 yard split. They don't really care about the 40 time too much. They drafted guys with, with bad 40s, which 40 yard dashes don't really matter that much for offensive linemen. But the 10 yard split is a big one. 52nd percentile for that. So they don't want you to be slow out there pretty much. Um, agility, they, they drafted guys below average agility. Um, although, you know, some people argue that it, it does matter for them. And, and they've also drafted some some freak guys, like, of course, Zach, Zach Tom, who is extremely agile. Um, but it, it's about hitting all the marks combined, which is the difficult thing. A lot of these marks, even the highest ones, might not seem that high, like ones around the 58th or 52nd percentile that we talked about. But it's about hitting all of them. And getting a prospect that hits all of them is harder than you might think. Um, the arm length, that's another interesting one. So the kind of accepted wisdom is that Packers don't play tackles if their arms are shorter than 33 and a quarter arms, uh, inch arms, which is Brian Bulaga basically was, was his arm length. And he has been accepted as kind of the floor for guys that'll play a tackle. If they have shorter arms on that, then you're probably going to be playing a guard instead. Um, however, I was cycling back because this is what I do for entertainment through some Brian Gudekunst old press conferences around the draft and after the draft specifically. And he made comments saying that he, you know, fully believed that Sean Ryan could play tackle in the NFL. You know, he may end up playing guard, but he fully believed he could play tackle. Now, Sean Ryan has 32, just over 32 and a third inch arms, which is much smaller, almost a full inch um, less than Bulaga. So either Goody was lying um, or just kind of, you know, being optimistic or genuinely they believe that he could have played tackle, that they don't they don't discriminate in that way and that he could have played tackle if they got him into camp and he was just playing well there. I guess once you get into camp, you know, you can just prove it, I suppose. You know, if you're playing well at tackle in camp, then, then maybe you'll stick there. But maybe for Ryan, that just didn't happen. Maybe for guys with shorter arms, that just doesn't happen. It's kind of hard to tell specifically. So anyway, enough with all that. Let's finally get into the players here. So the first one, I'm not breaking any news with this guy. He's the only kind of real top prospect we're going to talk about today. And that's Graham Barton from Duke. Um, 6'5 and a third, uh, 313 pounds, 32.875 inch arms. So 
he's a little under that that arm length that they traditionally like for tackle. But again, it's it's still considerably kind of more than Sean Ryan's arms are. Um, his testing was ridiculous. Uh, I mean, his RAS, and he didn't do the, the vert or the broad, which could be a problem potentially, but he absolutely just crushed the rest of the testing. I mean, if you put his relative athletic score um, at tackle, it was a 9.85 out of 10. As a guard, it was 9.99, and at center, it was a 10 like a 10 even, like the best athlete. And again, it's an incomplete score, so you can't really take that number, um, you know, for what it is. But it's still, the rest of the testing he did was unbelievable. It was elite testing across the board in terms of the the 40 and the agility drills that he did. Um, He's on the list here because he might be a center. And while the Packers generally care, um, especially in the first round, about guys doing all the athletic testing, it's something they've really cared about and having all that information. If he's a center, they might not care as much. I say this because they drafted Josh Myers uh, in the second round. Okay, it's not the first round, but it's still a premium pick. And he did basically no testing whatsoever. So do they care about it at center as much? Perhaps not. And Graham Barton's plenty athletic. He showed that anyway. So on, on tape, Barton, I really like him. I mean, most people do. I see why he projects kind of inside. A lot of people think, although he played left tackle, at Duke um, in kind of his final years there, that he's going to kick back into uh, either guard or center potentially. I see why he projects in there, just his build. He's a little bit shorter, obviously, than these big tackles you see out there, but the Packers don't really care about big tackles anyway. Uh, he's not quite as good in space as he is kind of, you know, when when he can use that help uh, inside, but he, he has a lot of really nice tools. He's very stout. Um, you know, he can really dig his heels in well and anchor well. He moves his feet well, which is something that you really just can't. If you don't have it, you don't have it. You can't really teach that. Um, he plays with good effort, you know, and he, he plays the run and the pass game both very well. Uh, I really like him. I think he's he's as good a bet as anyone if he was on the clock to be the Packers' first round pick. Um, he might be a center for them. Would they draft a center in the first round? Maybe, maybe not. But we didn't think they would draft a off-ball linebacker in the first round either. They're picking at 25. You never know. But Graham Barton, great player. Um, okay, moving on. Second player on the list, Blake Fisher from Notre Dame. He is more of your tackle, your kind of prototypical tackle size. 6'5 and 3 fifths, uh, 310 pounds, 34 and just over a third inch arms. So longer arms, much more of a tackle prospect. He played right tackle exclusively at Notre Dame because uh, someone called Joe Alt was playing left tackle. So I don't know if you guys have heard of him. Um, 7.72 relative athletic score. That's not going to blow you away, but it's comfortably above average. And every score he had was in the good category, basically on the, on the, um, on the scorecard there. So, so that's good to see. Um, in terms of the tape, he, he has the ingredients to be a really good tackle uh, in the NFL, in especially in the pass game. Um, you know, and he does his part in the run game too. But the pass game, you really see the upside there. All he really needs, it seems like to me, is just some development in his hand usage. I think that would clean up so many of his issues because other than that, he has just a really lot of a lot of really nice tools. Um, I think this is probably a day two guy, maybe like a round three guy, um, but he. I, I think, again, when you play with Joe Alt on the other side, you're kind of going to get knocked down a little bit because, well, you're not the prospect, the tackle prospect from your school. But Blake Fish is a good player, and he's going to be a good player in the NFL, I believe. Um, speaking of uh, players who maybe weren't the top prospect in their school, Roger Rosengarten uh, from Washington. Again, he played right tackle while Troy Fartano played left. He's 6'5 and a third, 308 pounds, 33 uh, and a half inch arms 9.19 RAS he did all the testing um, as did Blake Fisher before him Nine, uh, yeah elite elite speed great explosive um, scores so he he looks just like a packer I mean you look at the kind of the the RAS card and even watch him play he he just looks like a packers tackle uh, whether he'll stick a tackle or move inside we don't know yet but his arms are probably just about long enough if they wanted to keep trying him at tackle that, that they could Again, he has the feet that you can't teach. Um, they're really, really smooth. Um, and, and, and he has the ability, you see it, to be successful in kind of all phases of the game, pass game, run game. Um, again, he needs that development with his hands, and he probably just needs a few more pounds. He's probably a little bit light right now. He needs to get in an NFL strength room and just, just get on some functional strength onto his body and just learn how to set a firmer anchor. That's kind of something he struggles with right now. But again, a 
a definite prospect that could become a good player in this league like Fisher mm -hmm. uh, before him. And then the final two we're going to move on to are more uh, your tackles that are going to kick inside to guard, most likely. Um, Brandon Coleman from TCU, uh, 6'4 and 2 fifths, 313 pounds. He does have 34.625 inch arms. Um, so he has the arm length to play tackle, but he's probably just a little bit too short once you get to that like under 6'4 and a half that he is. It, that that's kind of guard height and when you watch him on tape you kind of think this is probably going to be a guard however the the athletic testing with this guy was unbelievable um as a guard his res and he completed all the testing is 9.97 so almost as good as it gets um i mean elite he was elite across the board his agility speed and explosion testing was all elite um his tape really didn't wow me very much at all i could have seen a bit of better games of him but he, I mean, he just looked fine and kind of worked like, uh, you know, out there at, at tackle for TCU. And you think, yeah, this guy's going to be going to be a guard. But the testing is so good um, that you kind of think, well, let's bank on this guy. You know, let's take a bet on this guy. I think fourth round, you know, for, for a guy like Coleman, he has played tackle. He could probably still bail you out there in a pinch if needed. But he's probably going to kick inside to guard at the next level. And then finally, uh, this is John Runyon reincarnate in Green Bay. And it's Carson Barnhart from... Michigan, like John Runyon, uh, six four and two fifths, three hundred and six pounds, thirty three and just over a third inch arms. Uh, his RAS was eight point eight five um, as a guard. If you put him there, he had great speed and explosion um, scores and a good agility score. Uh, when you look up his relative athletic score card, uh, his one of his comps, top comps, is John Runyon. And when you put them side by side, it's it's quite interesting to see. Obviously, they went to the same school, both played left tackle. Um, for for Michigan and, and probably going to play guard at the next level like like Runyon did. Uh, I liked his take probably more than I was expecting to. He's 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 way down there on like the consensus board outside the top the top two fifty. Not really like a guy who's expected to even be drafted. But he again he has the feet. He has the feet you need, and you you kind of have to have that. And he has active hands and and shows kind of potential to use them well. But that that can go up and down. It's not consistent. Um, he looks strong enough to me. Um, obviously he's athletic enough. Just very solid. I think just solid. I don't think there's anything about him that you think he's going to be an all-pro or anything like that. But where you're going to take Barnhart on, on day three, that's it's not really what you're looking for. You know, he's a guy you can put on your roster and probably feel pretty good if he has to jump in there and play. And maybe he develops into a starter for you in the long term like John Runyon did for Green Bay for so many years. All right, that's going to do it for today's episode with the offensive lineman picking out five players to watch out for when it comes to the Green Bay Packers in the 2024 NFL Draft. We're going to carry on this series coming up soon with the defensive lineman. If you like this video, make sure to drop a like and always subscribe to Cheesehead TV as well. You can catch my work over at cheeseheadtv.com and follow me on Twitter at Mark Oldacres. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Go Pack Go.